Hey Vavities, so welcome to my channel. Welcome, 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 all new, old, OGs, all that. Okay, we're finally gonna talk about where I've been, like how I've mentally been. Pretty much year. It's been for the past year. So let's get right into it. You know, I've been gone for a while, so I wanted to come back with telling y'all where I've been. Because I like being open with you guys, because I feel like I get to be more of my true self. I've always been a pretty bubbly person sometimes. I was always, like, you know, very nice. I'm very kind. Those are my good traits. I got bad ones, too, of course. But <laughs> we're just going to talk about the good ones and what led to the dark ones. So yeah, all started when my mom and dad separated. It wasn't something that was talked about when I was younger. Like, my mom just moved into an apartment, which is the apartment we've been in for like the past 15 years. And uh, there was like no explanation really behind it. Of course, like it was obvious that my parents had separated, but I was so young to so the, like, it wasn't clicking, you know, as much as it should have. It clicked, of course, when I was older. So I was very angry growing up as a child because I would get mad over the slightest things because I always thought everyone at home never understood me. Like, I always felt like the black sheep. As the years went by, my mom took me to therapy for my anger. And, you know, I fixed that. I, I knew how to control my anger, but it didn't hide the fact that I was still hurt, you know? There's many symptoms to like being depressed to having anxiety all that but what's mostly noticed is like the bad ones the ones that really bring attention the one um so for me it was anger like at home i was always angry so they took me to therapy for that but honestly my anger came from being sad like you know i that's that was like my explosive moments like i would just always get angry with people but it was really just like i was hurt so 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 yeah i went to therapy knew how to control my anger later on throughout the years like i would get depressed i would get i wouldn't think it was depression i guess maybe i'd call it depression but i didn't think it was like that serious so i would get sad i would there was moments where i'd become isolated like i wouldn't want to talk to anybody I didn't want to, I just wanted to be in my room by myself, not worrying about nobody, like no one, not wanting anyone to worry about me. I was on that type of timing, but that was like normal to me. I'm like, you know, sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. And I like, I would try to do stuff to get myself out of it, but there came a time when it got really bad. I was overwhelmed because, you know, adulting <laughs> isn't as easy. So, I mean, life itself isn't easy. But adulting, something that I never thought that I would know how to do, um, that freaked me out. Not knowing how to do something that I felt like I should know how to do. So, I was very, like, whenever my mom would tell me something like, Oh, Kiani, you should know better. You should... I'd be like, bro, you right. Like, how am I ever going to be an adult? How am I going to live on my own? None of this is going to work out. I was, like, so stressed and overwhelmed. That would bring me to, like, deep depression that would bring, that would bring myself to telling myself like oh like you're worthless like you have no use in this earth what are you doing what are you gonna do there was this weekend where my mom said no to something and i was super upset i i didn't know how to go through with the situation it was hanging out with some like someone i had met through snapchat and we were gonna hang out or whatever but my mom was like no like it's his stranger it was a guy he's like it's a stranger you don't know you don't know what y'all gonna do da -da -da. and i wasn't in, in the sneaky links <laughs> type of flow at that time so of course it wasn't my type of thing but i like meeting people so i was up for that and food like if there was gonna be food involved like you got me there just say food and i'm down <laughs> So, I was upset when my mom said no that I couldn't go. Like, I didn't even really ask her. I was just telling her. And she's like, no, like, why are you going to do that? You don't know the person, da, da, da. And I was like, damn, you right. Like, I want to know how to do things better. So, I'm going to try to listen to her. But I'm super upset that I didn't know this before she told me. So, I was super annoyed. I was like... <laughs> sad that whole night i probably cried myself to sleep that night because i'm like bro like you're never gonna end up adulting like you think you're gonna do good in the future without knowing how to do the beginning of it like you're not even starting right but it was a friday and the saturday i worked my sister mom had my car they took my car um 
they dropped me off and i was like all right but like it was an all right day at work it, i worked at the time at a restaurant restaurants are so toxic someone was supposed to obviously pick me up because i didn't have my car it was probably gonna supposed to be my sister or you know my mom whatever but none of them ended up picking me up and i called them like and it was just a miscommunication because my mom thought my sister was gonna pick me up i'm like I probably need this walk, so let me just go on a walk. Um, no one was home, so I, you know, I chilled on my phone. My phone was one of the biggest distractions to my mind that I could have, but it wasn't, like, the best thing either because to me it was, like, a coping skill because it would just, like, keep me out of my head. But the things that I was watching probably wasn't the best to, you know, help me with my mentality. And I didn't know that at the time. I didn't care. I just wanted to get out of my head without much to it and so yeah i was on my phone a lot and i would try to like make tiktok da, da, da. and i was trying to make a tiktok that day my sister heard like the song i was using was a megan the stallion y'all know she'd be cursing here and there like she she curses in her songs so my sister like my whole household like they don't listen to that kind of music then she got my mom into it she's like mommy you see she was just da, da, da. and of course my mom was gonna agree with her i thought she was gonna just tell my sister to shut up because it like my aura you could tell wasn't it but they didn't notice that at the time so yeah my mom was like yeah candy why you i'm like bro like y'all is just oh my gosh and i started snapping like and i always end up snapping on my mom i feel so bad about it especially now because i did that a lot i snapped on my mom a lot she has a lot of patience but i love the woman but yeah i snapped a lot and i snapped that day and i was like mommy like y'all just like y'all i don't know i was saying a whole bunch of stuff like how i don't want to tell her like that i was pretty much very deeply not okay because um also a little side note i didn't say this but um i also like throughout the whole week throughout the past like two weeks that was like the you know the main thing that caused everything else to happen Ooh, everything else to happen but for the past two weeks already i was very suicidal like i was thinking of different ways that i would die not that I could die like I wouldn't get myself to do that but like I was thinking like oh what if like I don't know I just drove into a pole or like what if I did I? it was very much realistically in my mind and it was dangerous because it was being very frequent like it was going on in my mind a lot and I would spend a lot of time on my own like at the time I was working at an office and when no one was there that's <laughs> when you don't hear like when you're alone i guess that's where like you know the devil really tries to attack and that was where it was trying to attack me so yeah so that night it was like really bad like that whole day i was very suicidal but i was trying to like push myself through it i was trying to be okay and yeah i didn't want to tell my mom like all that because i knew she would worry and i knew she would probably say like oh you know church da, 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 da. like pray da, da, da. that time i was like no like i don't want to know anything about church like i've been praying no answer no nothing like i feel no presence of nothing i don't even feel my own presence like i feel very much numb and just a ghost walking on earth type of thing and i had like a mini episode even that night where like i was just yelling and I have this thing where I get like really bad anxiety attacks where like I'm crying yelling. Like it's like a blackout type of thing and it's really bad. If It feels terrible. <laughs> it feels terrible. Let me tell you. And I fall back because I'm like bro like my sister is hearing all this. And even though she had like she had annoyed me to that point. I still love my sister dearly. I was extremely embarrassed. And that led me to just she came in the room and i didn't want to like be in the same room as her because i was still crying od so i went to the living room and i went to try to sleep there and i just felt like something deep it's like i hopped out of my body real quick to realize how much i wasn't in my body at all it hit me i was like bro like this is not okay like i'm really suicidal right now like i am thinking way too many ways to try to not be here so i i thought about it i'm like okay let me just go to my mom and tell her because if i do end up doing something to myself i wouldn't want my mom to find out that way like i i think i should just tell my mom now before something worse happens so so i went to her and i told i tried to tell her um I sat with her in the living room. We were in the dark because it was nighttime, you know, sleeping time. I told her how, like, 
um, how I was feeling and the whole suicidal thought thing. And she's like, oh, do you want to talk to somebody? Like, you want to talk some with someone from church? Da -da -da. I'm like, mommy, I don't want anyone to kind of know about this. And she's like, oh, but you need to talk to someone. Da -da -da -da. I'm like, mommy, like, I don't want to talk to anybody about this. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to talk to a friend. I don't, I don't want to do none of that. <laughs> Ended up calling the ambulance and we went to, um, I went in the little, I forget what they call it. It's like a bubble. I think they call it bubble. It's where like they, um, you stay there with literally nothing, just a bed and a chair, maybe, and a television that's behind a screen so you won't harm yourself literally with anything. And I did that for like a day and a half or two. I don't remember. And then I, that's when I went to a clinic and you know, I was in mated impatient i forget what it's called <laughs> i forgot all these terms but anyways i went to the clinic so i was at the point where like mentally i had already just cut the ropes if you want to say it like that i was at that point and i was just so dark that i was just like walking and going through things and trying to be myself but i just couldn't so when i went to the clinic i was not messing with nobody i didn't want to know about nothing like I was just there to do what they told me to do and just be gone. And not even, like, I didn't even care if I was gone or not. I just, like, again, I didn't care about anything that was to happen after that point because mentally I was already done. I got to meet some more people from the clinic that was my age and now we're, like, really close friends. But it, it was really nice to have to talk about like why these type of things happen or how to manage it or how to cope with it and like different medications and hearing like from patients as well like you're getting to know that you're not the only one and these deep thoughts like and, and i feel like going if you're if you go voluntarily there it's like you're trying to get yourself out of something that um you knew you couldn't do on your own like you're trying to look for help for real for real because it's gotten so deep like that so so yeah that's what i so i really i've learned a lot like um being in the clinic coming in and out i'm um, trying to uh, going all through all this has been a lot so um so yeah, this is where I'm at now. I'm so much better. I went a year without a therapist and I was going crazy not having one because I was really trying to and I couldn't find any because my insurance was all messed up. I've learned how to cope with it, like listening to encouraging things, praying a lot more. I realized that the only thing that would give me any sort of like hope or feeling was thinking about God. I started reading a book over there as well um it's called like your work your life is worth living by fulton sheen it's a catholic it's like a catholic book answering any questions you could possibly think of because that book answered a lot of questions that i would have i doubted about or whatever and it helped me to realize a lot too so again i realized that my life didn't mean anything without god in it so that's why I'm, I'm working on it slowly. It's not as easy, but I think we're getting somewhere. <laughs> I think we're getting somewhere. Um. So so yeah. So that was that's how it's that's how it started. And you know, I summarized very briefly how I got to where I am now. Um. I oh yeah, I did get the therapist eventually because I went to the clinic a second time. Where I'm at now, my mental health is doing better. Um. We're still working on it. I like uh, I haven't been going anywhere on social medias because I didn't want to. I feel like show people that side of me. It's like I I don't know. Like so you see everyone's life so perfect, so it's like I wanted to. And me like I try to be perfect for some reason so hard, and I feel like that's what sometimes brings me to the point that I do get like that. I feel like I'm not worth anything because I can't do the one thing that I that isn't for me or something. You know. I, you get what I mean? You get what I mean? I definitely appreciate anyone who did pray for me, helped me out through that time because it was very much needed. And I'm glad that I did go through it because I feel like I could help more people with it as well because it's not something easy to go through on your own. So now I'm going to answer some questions that I asked on Instagram a while back and I'm finally going to get to answer it. Okay, so first question, what are ways that make you happy and keep you away from depression? And she says, I love you, friend. I love you too, friend. 
Okay. Things that make me happy. Honestly, church, like things having, listening to worship music really boosts my energy up or encouraging songs. Like I like the song. It's, it's like ways. It's, it's ways with the dots in between, periods in between. Um, why aren't you smiling? That's what it's called by Janae Aiko. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna put a little. But um, it's very, you know, encouraging songs like that and keep me and things that keep me away from depression, like noticing what gets me there in the first place, like stopping it before it actually starts ex escalating. I try to de-escalate it as quick as I notice it. Um, yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> it takes practice. I'm gonna just, yeah, it takes a lot of strong will. Things that help me, people that bring out the best out of me, people that care about me and give me good advice, like good, good advice. Um, yeah. My other friend, she said, how are you now mentally, physically, etc. Love you. Love you too, friend. Um, mentally, I'm much better, like, I, I've grown a lot. Like, I'm very, when I say something, I try to stick with it i don't try to doubt myself i try to believe in myself before anyone does and if anyone doesn't i still try to believe in myself you know what i mean physically i'm doing better bro like guys i've been going to the gym and stuff because i gained a lot of weight and i'm still like i'm still losing it but i've lost a lot i'm gonna show y'all a little bit so you see you see that bro oh look at look at growth 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 in some areas as well next question how has depression impacted your view on life oh my gosh it has y'all ask good questions but it has changed my life like completely i've realized i've become very observant with my surroundings or when how how people act to try to pick up the signs before and try to be there for them and you know i try my best i mean i again it's not something that we could all work on but i try to be observant and realizing how people express themselves because th that really shows how they really feel without them actually saying it so just realizing that everyone's feelings are you have to take as serious as possible because if it gets them to a point that they're suicidal then that means it's serious no matter how serious it is to you or isn't you know what I've learned and, and what are some things that help you keep depression at bay? Um, like I said, like praying, being around family, contacting people. Like, I feel like doing stuff that I would want people to do with for me, like texting people, checking up on people, just making sure other people are okay makes me feel okay. And if they aren't okay, like trying to help them out makes me feel better because I just you know if i could have someone feel better with me which is, that's just it's a beautiful thing someone said oh are you better now yes like i feel like depression isn't really a thing that you could you know cure i feel like a lot of people have asked me like oh you you have to do this and that and this and that pretty much to get rid of it and it's not something you could completely get rid of it's something that you have to work with it's it's not you know, but I'm definitely better now. I'm definitely better now. <laughs> um, so let's ask, what led you to depression and how did your family deal with it? So I kind of explained that, how it led to depression, how I got led to depression, but how my family dealt with it. My family took it very well. Like my mom, she tried to learn more things about it because I would tell her how she would try to come at me about things that I would do. And I'm like, do you think I would do this if I was in the right state of mind? And she's like, she, no, she would be like, like, oh, I can't get not that being in la mente. I said, so I'm like, mommy, I'm not good in the head. That, that's the translation. She would say, um, only somebody not good in the head would do something like that. I'm like, mommy, because I'm not good in the head. Like, search that up and you'll see that people do impulsive things without thinking. That was me a lot. I did a lot of impulsive things. Working on it. Um... Someone said, you're so gorgeous, love, and I think it's amazing that you're being open about your journey. I super duper appreciate it. I'm glad that um, people find it interesting because I feel like it's something that should get more awareness. But, Chico, what you smelling? And he's like been my support animal too. Don't like me. He's been like my support animal, like my buddy, because any I've had moments where I snap even on Chico D. Goldie here. And he just don't care. <laughs> he gets over it really fast. 
so yeah having so it, he's so soft too like it just helps so much he's so cute isn't he isn't he so cute he's like an ugly cute because i'm not gonna lie please be anyways <laughs> a lot of things that help i'll maybe make more videos explaining all that how what helped me what or things that could help people i'm gonna make more videos about it just to help more people out i feel like that's gonna be my channel i'm gonna i'm gonna definitely do more sit down videos about dealing with depression and stuff because it's not i feel like something talked enough about it's got because everyone has it little do we know literally i've noticed that a lot of people have it people you would never expect hope you guys enjoyed this video i love you guys so much um glad y'all sticking around but see y'all in my next or previous video subscribe hit that like button comment below any other questions you might have ow suave chico and i will be more than happy to answer also follow my social medias it's down in my in the description box on my instagram if like i do any youtube videos i'll ask questions in there instead so yeah he's just mad playful like he really like me annoying him but i'll talk to you guys um soon hope to see you guys soon love you guys so much say bye chico say bye chico look at look at look at he <laughs> don't know what i'm talking about i always laugh like that when i laugh with him <laughs> all right all right see y'all